Cool. All right. Welcome everybody to the Zen Cash bi-weekly update, January 10th, 2018. So it is the start of a new year and we have some pretty amazing stuff in the pipeline, things that we're starting to work on right now and some pretty cool announcements this live stream. So uh, I'll start with the big picture of where we are now. Uh, I guess one, one change we're going to try to do to these live streams is we're going to try to make them a bit shorter. So we've been kind of expanding the team significantly and expanding the things that we're doing. And we've been talking for a long time every two weeks, uh, which is great. We want to definitely keep getting information out there. But at the same time, we want to be succinct. And that's what we're going to try to do. So we have about 25 slides today. And we're going to try to move through them relatively quickly. And we'll still reserve some Q&A time at the end. So this, this live stream is going to focus on what we're doing now, our, our 2018 focus, primarily the projects that we're starting in the first quarter. So a lot of this has to do with research and development. We have a couple of really cool updates for you. And we have some other development updates. And of course, our secure node system has been uh, maturing quite nicely. And we have some updates for you there. And then, as usual, we have our regional activity that we'll, we'll talk about. We'll have our country managers pop on and give you all of the cool updates that they're doing. And we have some great marketing activity that we want to highlight for you guys. So our marketing team uh, is going to pop on and give you the updates there. So the first thing that we'd like to start off with here is just our community member highlights. And we have two outstanding community members here that we wanted to mention. Um, again, and anytime you, you see someone just going above and beyond uh, what they, you know, it helping out in the community and helping people, definitely let us know. And Zen Chick, uh, that's Rosario, has been the focal point for that. So the two that we want to mention this week are Vladimir and Max. So Vladimir has been helping out tremendously in the Telegram channel, doing Zen Tech support. So thank you very much, Vlad, for that. And Max has just been an OG with us from the beginning. And um, he just recently put out a, a fabulous um, summary article of where the project uh, has come from in 2017 and summarizing some of the big stuff we have going on in 2018. So thank you very much, Max. Always love your content and you're super active on Reddit and our comm channels. So that's really great. Okay, so 2018. Uh, the slide here, I, I want to highlight three main areas. So we're calling this our year of expansion. That This last year was setting up, uh, setting ourselves up as an organization, doing some basic infrastructure, some basic technology things we needed to do. Now in 2018, we have three primary focal, focus areas. Now we have, we're calling them the first one, radical usability. So we know that um, we have to do a much better job with our user support and just making all of our products extremely simple and user-friendly. So we're focusing hard already. We have teams spun up working on, for instance, our wallet usability, and all of our products are going through review and uh, enhancements right now. So we want to make everything that we put out there easy and pleasing. The second big focus area for us is what we're calling radical transparency. Now, this is where we're building an integrated treasury and accounting system. So one thing that I personally think is this industry is not doing a very good job being transparent. Now, the blockchain and Bitcoin all kicked off with this big promise of transparency for the world, where we can see everything that goes on on blockchains. But the reality is a lot of projects have been raising a ton of capital, and we really don't know what they're doing with it. So a big motivation for what we're doing right here with these live streams is to be as transparent as possible, but we still need to do a better job. So that's where radical transparency comes in, where we're building uh, a, a really fascinating and, and uh, technologically advanced treasury and voting system, but then also other, other um, products that are going to be mi mixed in here. You know, we have... In the next week or so, we're going to have a new GUI proposal submission system where you can see proposals that are being submitted. You can comment on them. Uh, we can track everything that's going on. And we're integrating all of this into an accounting system so that we have real-time visibility into, at minimum, spending categories and where the budget's going. Uh, we want to be able to prove to the world that everything we're doing is being done fairly, 
and in a fully transparent and aud- auditable manner. Okay, so the third thing that we have going on this year is radical innovation. Now, this we have two big projects that we're announcing today uh, with an industry leader in research and development called IOHK. And these are going towards building a true DAO and working on our scalability issues now before they become a real problem. So I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in the coming slides. But this next one, um, slide five in the deck, I want to just highlight the partnership now. This is the big announcement today is uh, the, the technical team behind Ethereum Classic and Cardano is actually led by a company called IOHK. And one of our senior advisors, Charles Hoskinson, is the CEO of IOHK. And these guys have become, over the last couple of years, powerhouse in research and development for this industry. So we're extremely excited to announce our partnership with them, uh, particularly two really important projects that we have in the pipeline. So the next slide talks a little bit more about this R&D partnership. So the first project is our Zencast treasury model. So this is part a key part of our white paper that we knew we wanted to build all along. And we started off in this kind of incremental uh, process of, okay, we, we know that we want to open up the treasury to anyone in the community to submit proposals and we can triage them, pick those that we think are the best and fund them. But that's not good enough. What we need to do is we need to systematize the process and make it truly autonomous. And that's exactly what we're doing with IOHK right now. We are contracting with them to build, I think, the most sophisticated treasury system on the market. So it's it's the first step towards a true DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. Uh, we're leveraging our core ZK Snark technology for privacy and provably fair voting, where we have secret ballots that then get revealed at the end of voting epics. We're leveraging a year's worth of game theory research and combining along with a tremendous technology, we're combining um, very important economic incentives. So we're trying to really focus on two things for a killer app for the system, great technology and great economics. And what we have going with IOHK for this contract is the delivery of a prototype model where we'll be baking this into our protocol directly. So this will be an on-chain system, which will be a really big deal for the industry. So hopefully the work we do here becomes industry standard and we can keep evolving it. But this first iteration with IOHK is going to be a really big deal. Now, the second thing that we're working on with them is a scalability study. So we're keeping this initially relatively general where we're trying to be scientifically agnostic towards an implementation that makes the most sense for Zencash. Now, the we have a range of solutions that we're going to be evaluating, some of them off-chain, things that are very familiar to people in this industry, such as the Lightning Network, which might make sense for Zen, doing something similar to that. But we're also exploring very interesting on-chain solutions where we would actually revamp or significantly enhance our protocol going from a blockchain protocol to a DAG protocol, a graph-based protocol or a directed acyclic graph. Now, the key thing for a graph-based protocol is that you can have transactions validate other transactions and the more transaction volume you have on the network, the faster it actually becomes and the more reliable it actually becomes. So it takes blockchain scaling from linear scaling, like we have when we just adjust certain parameters like the block size, to now potentially exponential scaling where a single transaction validates other transactions. So this is a very exciting project. The output from here would be a scientific specification that could feed in feed to one of our other engineering teams to then implement into our protocol. So this is a very non-trivial thing. And there are only a few projects in the world looking at DAG-based solutions to, to tackle this big scaling problem. We're not sure yet whether this will be the holy grail of scalability. It may not be. So that's why we're taking this to a, a very methodical scientific approach to evaluate whether or not it's the right thing for us to do. Okay, so so that's that's the big thing, like a big high level picture of what we're doing in terms of these two big R and D projects with IOHK. Now, the next slide is a really cool infographic, just explaining a little bit more detail about what the treasury model is. So I'll just talk really quickly to it. But this graphic we're going to release uh, in a, a whole bunch of 
communication and marketing channel. So you'll have a chance to look at it otherwise. But really what we're doing is we're trying to create a fully inclusive, provably fair and transparent economic in- system with incentives that make sense so that everyone can participate. So we're trying to solve some issues that we know exist in voting systems and democracies and do a better job. So we're going to have a, a, a standardized um, protocol, for a proposal submission protocol. We're going to have funding that goes for, comes from block rewards like we currently have. And proposals will be open and uh, available for review by anyone in the system or anyone in the world, I should say. And anyone that owns a little bit of Zen will be able to vote on whatever protocol or whatever proposals they prefer or like best. Now we're going to have a three-step voting or a three-option voting system where you can you can essentially upvote or agree with something. You can say no, I don't like it, or you can abstain from voting on a particular proposal. And the the mechanism itself will aggregate the yeses, decrement that from the noes, and as long as the difference is greater than a minimum threshold. Yes, is what's going on here. Funded. Okay, so. Um, and this is going to be a stake weighted system, um, and people can earn Zen by participating and doing work, and then they could use that Zen to vote. And the cool thing is you actually get rewarded for voting. So there will be a voting reward, which comes from the funding pool. Um, ballots are going to be secret during the voting period, and then the results will be released towards the end of the voting period so that we we can have full auditability to make sure that everything is fair. Okay, so that's, in a nutshell, the treasury model that we're looking at with IOHK. And the great thing is it's going to be all on-chain, which is extremely important for censorship resistance and resiliency of the system in the long run. We want to automate things, and we want to move as much as we can that makes sense on-chain so we don't have off-chain points of vulnerability. Okay, so we'll field Q&A towards the, at the end here, but moving into uh, other development activities that we have ongoing. So we have across the board, part of part of this whole usability challenge that we have is to go from being a geeky techie project to bringing it to the masses, to make it massively usable. And we know this, and we know that our early, our early wallets, our early products were MVPs, minimum viable products, which were just meant to get something out into the world right away that early adopters could start testing and using so that the system goes live. Uh, what we've been doing in the background has been looking at product improvements. And now we have teams for each of our products working on releasing updated versions. So in this first quarter is going to be a big release of all of a re-release of all of our products to the next generation. So right now the Arisen wallet already go, has been going through systematic improvements and upgrades every Every week, they're releasing new new products and new upgrades to the market. Now we have a paper wallet generation feature was put into it. The Swing wallet has enhanced security and another Mac OS update. Ledger, we're doing the final stages of debugging right now, but that work continues. And the hardware wallet is extremely critical for what we have as a system to be uh, extremely private and resilient and secure. Uh, We have a variety of mobile wallets. Our in-house mobile wallet is going through an Italian translation right now. And we're also working on another stealth wallet, which we'll have more information about in the coming weeks, which is geared for new users to crypto. So we really are taking this mandate seriously to go from a geeky project to a massively usable and mainstream project. Now, another big thing that we're just starting now going towards usability is we're happy to announce that we're accepting a one-click miner proposal that was submitted on the forum a couple of weeks ago. It's a very exciting project where mining is not a simple process. And the easier we can make mining, particularly for gamers that have GPUs available, the better. And that's exactly what this proposal is doing, is a really simple one-click miner so that anyone that has spare GPU capacity can now start mining Zen. Um, and that also goes towards our decentralization mandate. We need to be as massively decentralized as possible. So the more miners we get out there, the better. Um, As alluded to previously, we have a voting and proposal GUI, graphical user interface system that we've been talking about now for a couple of months. And it's actually now in alpha testing uh, with Dom, uh, at Dom. He's actually a very smart guy. And we expect an announcement of open beta testing in the next few days. So certainly by the next live stream. Okay, we're in the planning stages already for 
the second version of our secure node system. That's going to be very exciting work. Now, we have the current secure node system in beta, and we have a, a detailed update on that, but we're already starting the planning stages for a protocol level secure node system, taking everything that is quite sophisticated on an off-chain architecture currently and baking that into the protocol to make it much more censorship resistant. And we're evaluating, now we have actually a dedicated team evaluating blockchain upstream improvements. So we have a lot of work going on there. And in the next week or two, we're going to be prioritizing a whole set of improvement projects to the core blockchain. So there's some really interesting stuff. By the next live stream, I'll be very excited to announce some of those projects. Okay, so the next the next chart talks about Arisen, and there's a lot of a lot of updates to the Arisen wallet. There's a, a dedicated team working on this, and it's currently, I think, probably our most popular wallet uh, in terms of a light client for people to download and use right away with a nice interface. Uh, so there's another another up, big update coming through in, uh, next week, mid January. Uh, already, you can print your paper wallet QR code. Uh, that's your private key and address, which is a very convenient convenient thing to keep your your uh, money offline. Very important for security. Uh, we have some language updates, so language localization, where there's actually a bounty. So go to the GitHub for that project, um, and your balance is shown in fiat with uh, an exchange rate, which is just a nice and convenient user friendly thing. So you've got your Zen balance, and it also shows you your fiat currency balance. Uh, we have an import export for private keys and consolidating your, your Zen, Zen cash into a single address and continuing to fix known issues. So the, there was an antivirus issue, which is uh, fixed, which is really nice that, that the teams fixed that so quickly. What was happening was the wallet was, not, was failing antivirus on some systems, so it was being blocked from install. But that was a, a certificate signing issue, which we resolved. Uh, and we have some other uh, you know, smaller issues that are constantly being resolved. So now the one-click miner project, this is a GUI miner, which will be easily downloaded and you can control it with the GUI. And the target audience for this system is going to be gamers or anyone with a new generation GPU, which we're an Equihash GPU-based mining algorithm. So this is exactly the market that we want to target. So this was a very exciting project to see this uh, posted on our, on our forum. So just again, I have to just make this very clear. Anyone that has an idea of where we should take this project, whether that's a new product or some other you know, marketing direction or something, feel free, please like, join our forum and submit a proposal to do work. This is a great way to just share the Zen around the community. Uh, so the goal here is to just create a, a much lower barrier for entry for someone who might be new to mining and doesn't want to go through the, the owner setup. Okay, so secure node updates. Let's see, um, Alan, are you available? online as usual to give your your update to the secure node system yep i'm here um i've been working the last couple of weeks on optimizing some of the uh, code on the servers and adding adding throttles into a lot of the uh, spikes that have been happening adding queues into it so that we can smooth out the um the actual processing that the servers have been doing on each of their individual uh, BPSs. And that has been helping uh, on the flow to be able to get to the um, back to the payments uh, because there was some conflict a little bit between the payment system pushing a lot of transactions at one time compared to you know, the, the nodes actually or the servers actually. Um, also trying to do that. So that contention has been reduced quite a bit. Um, we have a new version of the tracker out that also helps us to balance loads across the servers. And that allows uh, an ad administrator on the server to actually take a group of nodes and say, okay, I've got too many on one server, I'm gonna move them over to another server. And we've got the two new servers also to help uh, with the scaling that we've seen, since we've had over 6,000 nodes running now. Um, we've already, uh, ah, on the downtimes that are on the 17th and 18th, we're going back to the payments. We'll be generating payments um, starting from that point forward, now that everything's smoothed out. And we'll be, be doing that um, in small 
groups to make sure that everything looks good for each step and get these uh, get the payments and the payouts caught up as soon as we can. Back to you, Rob. Awesome. Yeah, that's um, really good news. And uh, I'm excited that we're going to continue making payments and catch up very soon. Now, um, I was checking the secure node settings earlier. I, I, our slide is up, is outdated already. We have over 6,000 nodes on the network, which is huge. So we're already catching up to Bitcoin. I'm not sure what they are right now, but I think that if we if we continue making progress in the system, we could actually be a more have a more decentralized node architecture than Bitcoin itself, which is amazing for a project that's about seven months old. So, okay, cool. Um, the the next thing is we have a whole bunch of marketing updates. So Tatiana, do you want to jump in there and uh, talk about all the good news? Yes, I'd love to. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Um, cool. So yeah, we've got our new logo after all this, uh, you know, fading one way or the other, lots of voting and the community chose. So we've got all the new colors. The previous logo is now retired. I was just looking at Discord. Some people were writing that they like it, which is nice. Sometimes people are grouchy in there. It's scary in there sometimes. But today everybody's happy, which is good. I think there's a lot of good news, so it makes sense. Um, all the materials need to be updated with this logo. So please update anything. Uh, we're creating a brand board. But in the meantime, Callie, she's traveling today. But uh, she left a file that has all different kinds of stuff that's going to be shared with the community soon. Uh, I think Rosario's got to just check it over, and then that's going to happen. Um, then there is the new website. So if you guys go to Zencast.com right now, that's sort of like a placeholder, but that's the general vibe of the new one. And we thought it looked nice and clean. We like that we have the new announcement on there and all that stuff. And um, it's only going to get better from here. So we're pretty psyched that that's in place. Everybody's been working like crazy in order to make it happen. So it's really good to see um, at least that soft launch going on. Um, we have been doing different ad campaigns. So we did coin market cap, <clears throat> Diario Bitcoin, BTC Media, and then Portal do Bitcoin is the Brazilian one. So I don't know how that's been performing. We're waiting for their results, but these are the um, these are the results that are going on right now. So I think that they're pretty good. I'd love to play around and get like a jit like a gif i don't know if you're supposed to say a gif or a gif sorry to sound like a dork but anyway um I, I think it'd be cool if we had gifs um for next time uh to test it out so we're gonna come up with some new options for ads uh in the upcoming weeks and then we'll we'll consider doing another campaign based on that um then we did some ad campaigns on facebook callie's been leading this effort um, but basically we are reaching actually a lot more women than usual. I was pretty surprised to see that it was 55% women. So maybe Zencash is the, is the currency of, of the ladies. Uh, not really, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, 34% of the people were ages 35 to 44. Um, 93% were in the Ukraine and we had 226 engagements. Uh, 114 people taking action. So this was going through London, Moscow, Tel Aviv, Kiev, uh, NYC, and Los Angeles. And then they did another test. So they did a couple ads and they tested them against each other. So these are the ones that won. And um, the reach was 84,000 with 144,000 impressions, 298 um, people taking action across the same cities. Again, London, Moscow, Tel Aviv, Kiev. Uh, New York and LA. And the Facebook ads have allowed us to reach 91,731 people. And they've visited the website over the past uh, 28 days. So <clears throat> all the social media analytics are looking good. Everything is looking up. So it helps us when you guys engage with us, especially the people who are the core people that are tuning into this meeting. So, you know, uh, we love your action on the, you know, Discord or whatever, but also on the socials. Anytime you guys can give us a retweet, a like, a share, that of course helps. Um, 
And yeah, I know that we also. Yeah, me too. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that was a mistake. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. So yeah, I mean, uh, we're also doing some video content, and we'll have some updates on that for you guys. Uh, the Free Talk Live thing is running. Uh, Sovereign Tech is promoting us, so everything is is moving along nicely, and we'll have some some new updates for you guys. Uh, we're continuing with Scott we're in as well. So yeah, we'll talk with, uh, I guess that's it. If anybody's got any questions, just send them on over. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tatiana. The next section is our country lead updates and we have just a growing team. Uh, you can see how seriously we're taking our, our global expansion where we don't want to just be a U.S. or Europe European dominated project. We want this to be truly global. So uh, the first team that we have here is our Australia, New Zealand team being headed up by Adnan. Uh, I don't believe Adnan's available right now since it is super early in the morning in Australia. But um, so he put together a slide here and he's just reinforcing that Zen Cash brand is getting much more popular in their market. Uh, and there is a, a very visibly uh, visible increase in community awareness. Um, so he's also arranging some big meetups, uh, ones with a crypto trading group of over 500 members in Sydney later in January, and hoping to live stream with someone from our team to join that. Uh, also, he's meeting with the Blockchain Center, um, so TBD on the date for exploring a partnership with them and uh, another series of meetups. And he's working on some exchanges locally in that region. So we already have Cryptopia in New Zealand but there's two other big exchanges, so ACX and BTC Markets that we're looking to integrate into. So on that note, I should say that we're looking at uh, very serious exchange, exchange uh, listings in this first quarter. Well, I should say right now, uh, but certainly by the end of the quarter, we want to have a whole set of very important exchange listings uh, to enhance our liquidity. So the next market is for that the David is um, running, the Russia and Eastern European market. David, are you available? Yes, sir, I am. Hey, everyone. Excellent. Well, uh, it has been a busy two weeks, as for everyone, especially with these news coming up. <clears throat> Our efforts has been mostly focused on make sure we synchronize uh, literally like blasting out the news to everyone we can in our market, respective markets, uh, to all these couple hundred million Russian speaking world, not just Russia, but Ukraine and other CIS countries. Uh, and I'm I'm really pleased how the team has performed literally like, oh, I'm going to talk about our information portal that went live and the screenshot that you see was before we officially changed logo. And when we started this talk, uh, when Rob started 1, 1 p.m., uh, it was still old logo. I just refreshed the page and they already posted a new logo. So it has a refreshed look. So in the first line, when I say update coming for new look, well, it just happened in the last 45 minutes. So they've been literally working in like a almost 24 seven. It does different time zone there. And, um, you know, very hard to make this happen. We already published uh, actually, I think two interviews there, both in Russian and English. And ultimately we plan to support about five languages uh, so it's it's as just like our website it's the very beginning it's almost like a first draft but it's going to be a lot of built up on top of it the second news i wanted to announce and i'm really excited about is to uh, have said uh, mamadov join our team uh, to lead up the turkey and uh, azerbaijan he's himself from azerbaijan but has lived in turkey many years is fluent in that language uh, he has actually extensive background in finance. He has uh, built. Uh, he has worked on Wall Street. Has some uh, built up some um, investment funds uh, for high net worth individuals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, he has already is already rocking and rolling. Literally, he got us on the main portal of Turkey called uh, Coin Turk. It's basically the main website that all the Turkish people go to get their news. Uh, we already have two articles there, including interview from Rob. And we got added on as uh, one of the, quote, most popular altcoins on their short list. Um, Said, if you are online and if we figured out how to make this Discord work, please say, you know, a couple sentences hi to the community. Um, yeah, Discord is challenge for everyone initially. So are you here? Yes, David, I'm here. Can you hear me? All right. Yes, sir. Everyone can hear you. Go ahead. Great. Well, thanks, David. And, and I'm really excited. To, uh, you know, I met uh, Rob and the team that's in Colombia. You know, got involved in the project. 
Yeah, so I'll I'll send my proposal later on on the on the website so every, everybody can see. But our target markets, Azerbaijan and, and 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 Turkey, have combined of 90 million people, mostly young population, tech savvy, and we also have uh, currencies there which are quite volatile and the political system which is quite iffy. So it's a very fertile ground for cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and privacy currencies. So I'm very excited. I think we're going to have success there. And David already mentioned we started doing some work, so hopefully, uh, you know, next update I'll I'll have more information to share. But I just want to say, you know, thank you, and I'm happy to to join the team. I'm excited. Thanks, Said. Uh, great to have you. You know, as I mentioned. And last but not the least, uh, I I essentially put my first draft of um, Trello uh, roadmap. Uh, it's public now. And I picked, uh, you know, I try to focus on three different directions, including R&D. That's going to include our developers that are based on Eastern Europe, uh, community support and marketing. That's probably the biggest part that we're doing right now, just to get the word out there to millions of people on their own language. I think it's very important. And uh, merchant and cross-platform integration. Um, I've also, I'm also, I'm not going to go into details in the interest of time here. So anybody can see it and view it and certainly send us a feedback if you have any. So that's all, Rob. Go ahead. Okay, awesome. Yeah, thank you for the, the great update, guys. Uh, Rowan, do you want to take the UK slide? Yeah, sure. No problem at all. So first and foremost, UK team expansion. I'd like to extend a, a really warm welcome to two new members of the UK team. So we have Mac Cordingly, who's Mac on Discord, and James Coleman-Powell, JCP on Discord. Both guys have kind of been there and done that with a number of different roles in the IT space. But to kind of summarize, Mac is a, a back-end developer and an all-round crypto evangelist from the northeast of England. Um, already been a big help to both Rocket and Chronic with some ongoing development work. So huge thanks for that. James is an IT project manager and also a creative designer. And he's based right down at the south coast of England, which gives us a really good geographical spread across the UK. He's also jumped in, rolls his sleeves up, and helped create a couple of banner images for the UK Twitter page. Um, I think they look absolutely brilliant, so hopefully you can head on over to at Zencash UK and check them out. Both guys are highly skilled and super driven, so really excited to have them on board. Moving on to media content, there's obviously been a huge amount of work put into rebranding, which I hope everyone is liking as much as we are. Um, certainly stoked to have that out for, in the wild for everyone to see. But there's still a load of work to be done on the content front. So we're going to start off by trying to create some specific content that aims to explain what our core tech is all about. The first one we're working on is an animated short to try and explain ZK snarks in all their glory. It's a question that I get asked all the time. So if we can try and nail that with a decent animation that's easily shared, that would be fantastic. So that's a, a work in progress. Next up is a project that JCP is working on. It's an infographic to try and explain our secure node network. Personally, I don't think that the, the general crypto population really realize how big a deal it is to have a network of 6,000 plus secure nodes all operating with end-to-end -end encryption. So we really want to try and condense down an explanation of what the network is and how it works into some sort of easy to share infographic that we can put through the normal channels. So James is on the case for that at the moment. Moving on to exhibitions here in the UK. There's kind of three main exhibitions we're looking to attend in the coming months. There's the Crypto Investor Show, which is going to be in London in March. It's their inaugural event. However, the team behind it seem really skilled. They've done quite a few big exhibitions in the past, so I'm quite hopeful that it's going to be a good one for us to get down to. We've also got CoinFest UK, which is a much smaller event, primarily for end users, which obviously the most important market for us. Still in discussion regarding exactly what that attendance is going to look like, but we're definitely going to be there. And then Blockchain Live. So Blockchain Live is going to be in the Olympia in London in September, um, which, yes, is quite a long way away, but it's a huge event. And to really make these huge events go properly, you need quite a lot of pre-planning and bits and pieces. So we're working on securing space for that at the moment. We've just booked the booth today, and we're going to try and make sure that we make the most of that event. Last up, a couple of recent mentions. We've been on news.bitcoin.com again. 
um, in an, quite an entertaining article on vaporware. Um, so definitely go and check that out. We've built up a pretty good relationship with one of the main journalists there. So we're getting mentioned on that website pretty frequently now, almost once a week, which is fantastic for exposure. And then the last mention is coinandwallet.com. They created a, a new page on masternodes and have included reference to our secure node network along with some links to instructions and how to get set up. So thanks to the guys over there for that. And I think that is it. Back to you, Rob. Cool. Well, another great update, Rowan. And I just want to piggyback on the point that you made about how how important it is that we have over 6,000 nodes on our network. And having a network this size just lays the lays the foundation to be able to do a whole set of really amazing technology projects on top of it. So there's a lot more to come there. And if you want a sneak preview, uh, check out a roadmap on Charlo, some of the projects we have in the pipeline. But I think uh, the video that you're going to work on is going to be awesome to start highlighting why this is such a big deal. Uh, okay, Luca, are you available to discuss all the, all the fun updates in Italy? Yes, I am. Hi, Robert. Hi, uh, hello, community. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. okay, Luca, I see that you're trying to talk and you're unmuted, but for some reason it's not coming through. I can hear him, Rob. Uh, maybe it's on your end. I just heard him. <clears throat> okay, so it looks oh, like... Uh, actually, maybe uh, it's coming through on the YouTube, but not coming through on Discord. So I guess uh, have at it. And um... Okay, so... Um... I don't know uh, exactly why, but uh, I, I'm going through uh, my part. Uh, so thank you, Robert, for um, all the things you have uh, released to us today. Uh, it's uh, all exciting news. I, I really hope that uh, everybody can, uh, can get the importance of uh, what we have just released because it's, uh, it's really great stuff. Um, from my side, from the Italian market, uh, basically, I'm uh, speaking with um, with companies already using the blockchain, uh, presenting our project. Um, I'm speaking especially to well, I put two logos on this slide, uh, an agriculture uh, company that uh, has already implemented the blockchain in their uh, processes, and also Chainblock is uh, uh, the first ATM. Um, cryptocurrency at ATM uh, here in Italy. Um, I have been uh, invited to talk at different events, basically blockchain workshops in Italy, blockchain events. Uh, I can see the number of these kind of events growing. So um, there is definitely the possibility to exploit uh, the uh, growing interest uh, that we, uh, we are seeing uh, here in Italy. Um, I would like to remind it's a small country uh, but with a huge potential because uh, uh, people um, that that are into um, cryptocurrency tend to uh, invest a lot. Uh, so it's um, it's a, always a strategic uh, country. Whatever the industry is, is uh, I saw it already in the video game industry. I come from that uh, industry. It was my my previous uh, job. Uh, but it's um, it's it's really it's really a strategic country also for uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, then I I'd like to uh, take part to um, to one of the TEDx that are organized here in the in the nearby, especially around the Milan area. I've already taken part to uh, the um, this year's uh, edition. So I was there to, to speak about uh, uh, the most interesting projects on, uh, on uh, the blockchain. Uh, but now I, I would like to, I'm trying to reach them out to uh, present Zencash in a TEDx. I think that would be definitely um, a thing. I mean, being recorded, uh, speaking about uh, Zencash in such an uh, important uh, event would be something to, to exploit also from a marketing perspective. Um, I'm meeting uh, with university students and uh, with these, uh, I'm having a lot of fun uh, because I speak uh, to two kinds of people, people that know already cryptocurrencies. Uh, so they really, uh, they're really hungry. They want to uh, know more about Zencash um, and uh, people that don't, don't know it at all. Uh, so I, I do some kind of, uh, uh, I transfer the knowledge about this 
this new 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 world that is uh, that is literally uh, growing um, and exploding. Um, and then, uh, of course, I'm uh, promoting the secure nodes adoption also here in the country and creating marketing uh, documentation. Uh, on this last point, I'd like to to thanks um, Kelly for the support and all the other people involved in the marketing research. Uh, last but not least, uh, Robert mentioned it uh, uh, before. We now have uh, the Italian translation for the mobile wallet. So I invite uh, all the Italian community listening uh, right now that will listen later on to this uh, big weekly update to download it uh, because we also have the Italian translation now. That's all for me now. Uh, thank you, Robert. I wish you a nice continuation. I, yeah, anyone can hear me? Yes, we all can hear you. Uh, that is good. Uh, first of all, I want to take the moment to answer the the question: How many uh, nodes Bitcoin has? Because Bitcoin has roughly eleven thousand uh, nodes around the world, roughly around twenty two thousand, and uh, with around six thousand nodes, we are in the class of Dash because Dash master nodes they are also I think from four to six thousand around this number. So uh, this as a beginner, and then I want to tell you the pictures. This is one of the German news uh, pages from the internet where you can find several news about cryptocurrencies. They also have instructions. And uh, these pictures are taken from an interview which we had in December. Uh, so there will be hopefully soon an article about the interview, or at least I will put the interview on video online. And these are the starter words. Uh, some important information for the German market. The last meetup in Freiberg uh, was like an open talk. And the next one will be different because we are in Frankfurt am Main in the, the big skyscraper. And uh, here we will also have a small group of my local blockchain experts. Um, meaning we will have uh, maximum 50 people. Uh, some of them are business uh, blockchain experts. Some of them are new or they want to check out Zencash and the capabilities of us. So it will be very interesting. And uh, Antonio from PricewaterhouseCooper is cooperating very good so far. The location is great. Um, registration is for free. And uh, um, please do me the favor, do it through the meetup.com platform because uh, there we can have the counting of the members who want to come on the 19th January. If you don't find it, just Google or look on meetup.com, Sencash Germany on the road. Uh, as title for the appointment on 19th January and feel free to register. So then um, another important uh, event for us in Germany will be the Bosch Hackathon in Berlin. And um, there I will attend in the supply chain to win the pitch, of course, and show a Sencash based application. Um, yeah, if anyone, great. I'm every time there for question Q and A's, um, yeah. Is for us on uh, March. We uh, or for Germany, I want to have a new proposal. Get some different new people or old people uh, in a project. And if you are a developer from Germany, if you only speak German, then uh, I will repeat it in German anyway. So just contact me, and then we can work together for, for example, a three-month project proposal. I will support you, and uh, happy to have you on board. Then sage ich das noch mal in Deutsch. Äh, wenn ihr Programmierer seid und ihr Schwierigkeiten mit dem Englisch habt, was, wovon ich meistens nicht ausgehe, meldet euch einfach bei mir. Wir können ein drei monats programm zusammenschreiben. Ich freue mich, wenn ihr euch bei mir meldet. Äh, wenn ihr euch bei mir meldet. So, and uh, I think that's generally all. The last thing what I have is the next slide. Can someone jump to the next slide? 
great. <clears throat> so this is one of the use cases which I was working on, and it is uh, from the German market because the CEO and uh, I think the co-founder from the Social X platform, Social X network, they are Germans. That's how I met them through Facebook, finally. <laughs> and uh, I thought like, hey, come on, Sendcash and uh, Social X network, we can do something together. Because uh, that's the first important thing. What is Social X platform? It is like a social media, like Instagram. But uh, first of all, it gives ownership of the content back to the social media users. Second point is it's integrating freedom of speech as a core principle. And the third thing is it's building a reward system for contributors like Steemit has. And uh, these are the three reasons why uh, I suggested to the core team, let's support them. It is also supported that like the, the alpha, which they already uh, leased, that they use a Serum based uh, CK snark implementation. So also, we have four core futures, CK Snark, and they are also using it already in the alpha. If you want to check out the alpha, there's a picture about it. Uh, the link is a little bit hard to see, but if you're on YouTube, you can might pause it and then find it. So furthermore, uh, they integrated a license management market. They have encrypted messenger like our SendChat, Send chat, of course. And uh, they have live stream functionalities on their roadmap. So definitely for us, it's something to support. And this is why uh, if you have sent, you can invest in the ICO, which is starting from the 15th January to the 25th. Um, they have a KYC process. So, uh, this means know your customer, of course, is applied in the process. And uh, you have to hand in a serum address which is then linked to the send sender address. Um, another important point is that for the investment, at least you have to, to send uh, 10 cent in total. This is uh, the small box under the picture. Question, if you want to know something more, just feel free to contact me or just uh, try to send emails, of course, also possible. The distribution of the social X tokens, of which you buy through send, we will post the ICO, meaning after the 25th January, we will distribute uh, all the social X tokens to the linked Ethereum addresses. I think that's all from my side, and uh, thank you. And uh, Deutschland, hey, uh, thanks again to the German community for Bitcoin Talk and all the support in Discord. Thank you. It does is very good, Arno. Vielen Dank. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, cool. The The next market we have up is the China market and Jin, I don't believe is online right now. So I'll just quickly cover what's going on is we're, they've been focusing on growing the WeChat group. So it keeps on expanding uh, since over the last two weeks, a 15% growth, still a relatively small number of users. But if we can keep maintaining these growth rates, uh, we could start building up a, a much bigger, more significant community in China. Um, and in general, we need we need a, a very big comprehensive Asian um, strategy for growth. So China is a key part of that market. So we're going to continue uh, focusing resources in China and try to grow the community. Uh, so we've been invited to an annual uh, event uh, for a large blockchain community in China. So there'll be more details forthcoming on that and continue to work on promoting articles and creating a marketing plan uh, dedicated for that market. Uh, the first part is now translating the news and website. Uh, into, into Mandarin. So uh, good stuff going on there. And the next market we have up is the Mexican and Latin American market. Angie, are you online? Hi there. Yes, I am. Awesome. Very good. Hello to everyone. Um, I have to say I'm pretty excited to to this one, uh, to the first uh, bi-weekly update of, of the year. Uh, I think we are having amazing news from different parts of the world, from the core team. And I have to say that I really, really like and love the, the new logo. It's, it's amazing. I mean, I love the colors, everything, which is pretty, pretty exciting and and kind of cool uh well we we are uh having a lot of uh things going on right now in uh, through the whole um not only the, the mexican market but the the latin american market a lot of people are being very responsive to uh 
to us entering uh, to to this market, uh, people is very interested, always asking questions and asking what's the next event we're gonna we're we're about to to be, and they also want to participate and take part of of the team, uh, which is uh, uh, always everyone is welcome to to join us. Um, we we've been having a lot of uh, movement through the social media, a lot of brand awareness in in these channels. We have. Um, as uh, as always, the Instagram, the Facebook pages, um, and also Telegram recently, which a lot of people is is uh, joining lately, and a lot of uh, uh, increasing in in this uh, likes and the the movement between the the social media. Uh, we we recently have also a, a Senka interview in uh, hablando de blockchain and, and crypto uh, with Robin Rosario that they had uh, the, uh, in past December. And this has recently been posted in Panda Noticias um, .xyz, uh, which is great because I saw it again, and, and it is it is quite amazing as well. And also uh, um, the people from Panda Noticias, which has been amazing and like super super friendly and helpful, they also made me an interview to talk about Sencash, which is about to be released in the next uh, upcoming week or in the next few weeks. And also we have a uh, possible attendance to Anarcapulco, which is a big uh, and important crypto event here in Mexico. So we hopefully um, uh, will be able to be there. And because a lot of people are asking if we're going to be there, a lot of people want to meet the team and like, hey, I want to get to know a little bit more about Senkash, to talk to you in real person, which is great. Because we 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 know and and we we know that um, talking one on one with people is always great and having that um, confidence and trust within the community is always important. And what else? And we are about to uh, give the date for the first meetup here in in my city in Monterrey, Mexico, which is maybe taking place in March or April, one of the two months. So uh, so far so good. We've been doing a, a lot of things right now. A lot of movement. Still, there's a lot of uh, of work going on. We we need to catch up with with everything with everyone because I, I I can see from from my country that everyone is doing an amazing job. We're just starting the year, and right now we have a ton of new things going going on, which is great. So this is this is also pretty pretty interesting and exciting thing to see um, that we are growing, that we are uh, fortifying the network, the people, the community. The new logo, I repeat, <laughs> which is great, and um, and what else? And yeah, I mean, there's a lot of work that, that still needs to be done, but we're gonna continue giving our best. I invite all the people uh, from Latin America to reach me, as well as Arno was saying, just send an email uh, right through Discord or any of the channels we have. Uh, feel free to ask questions in Spanish to to anything, anything. Just just reach me out, and um, I think so far so good. That's it. Thank you a lot, guys. Awesome. Thank you, Angie. Uh, and Andreas, are you available to give the Scandinavian market update? Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep, excellent. Excellent. All right. So my name is Andreas Widerow. I'm here live from southern Norway. I'm going to give you a short update on uh, what's going on in uh, Scandinavia. Um, Senkes is is uh, is getting more attention and a bigger brand awareness uh, amongst the crypto communities and in the social media space here in uh, Scandinavia. Um, and in the next few weeks, um, uh, I will be attending a couple of uh, crypto meetups here in uh, Norway, where I'll be uh, doing Senkes pr presentations and uh, help people get started with Senkes. And I will also be some doing uh, networking uh, with everyone who's, who's interested in in crypto. Um, currently, I'm also working on expanding the Sandcash Scandinavian team. I hope to have some updates on this in the next uh, few weeks. If anyone who's listening here uh, would like to, um, to participate and uh, join in, feel free to drop me a, a line on uh, Discord or email or any other channels where press presented in. Um, We'll, uh, we'll be starting up with a bi-weekly newsletter letter, uh, aimed primarily at media companies and journalists to get some broader mass media attention and, uh, and mentions here in, in Scandinavia. So that's coming up in the next few weeks as well. Um, 
Another uh, quite big thing is a presentation I'm doing for uh, online uh, Zencash crypto community, which has about 13,000 members. That's also coming out this, uh, this week, uh, hopefully. Besides that, I keep on doing translations, uh, material community support, and uh, keep building our social media profile and, uh, and our Discord uh, presence uh, here in Scandinavia. So that's it from uh, Scandinavia. Thanks. Cool. Thank you, Andreas, and stay warm over there. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, so we've got we have two gentlemen from um, Japan now who are helping out growing our presence in Japan. So, do we have Tega or uh, Sebastian online? I'm guessing probably not. So, uh, if if you're around, just feel free to chime in. Otherwise, I'll just quickly go through your slides. Uh, so, so Tega and, and uh, Sebastian have just started working together over the last couple of weeks. And the first thing they did was attended a Zcash meetup in Tokyo. Um, so we had a bit of a Zen presence there. Uh, and they're, they're doing the fundamentals of setting up the you know, basic social media architecture or you know, infrastructure. Uh, they just set up a Japanese Twitter account and they're doing secure node setup guides translated into Japanese. Uh, wrote a blog post recently on how to acquire Zen for Japanese people, uh, and will attend a blockchain focused meetup and you know essentially a series of meetups over this you know coming couple months, and just getting the basics of a presence going on in Japan. Uh, so Sebastian just joined the team. Uh, so he's actually uh, born in Germany and Cologne, Germany, but he's been living and working in Japan since 2012. Uh, he has uh, five years of an IT systems engineering background, and he's been working in automotive engineering. But now he's recently picked up um, an interest in cryptocurrencies and is helping out, um, you know, with uh, Tega and that market. So uh, what they're doing is they're working on a, a nice methodical three-month plan. Um, so in January, February, and March, they're building milestones for what they want to do. Uh, and then they're also working just um, building Japanese community overall and general awareness of the technology, the project itself, helping people set up secure nodes and doing some basic public relations. So, okay, cool. So that's that's what we have there. Um, we're just about to approach an hour, I think here on the, the live stream. But um, just to recap, actually one thing I want to say, these new slides I think are looking awesome. So thank you very much to Rosario for just coordinating everything as always and just being kind of the, the engine behind uh, basically all the stuff that we have going on in the background. So uh, everything worked out extremely well, especially all, all of your help with the rebrand and coordinating everything with PR releases and just so much work going on. Um, Tatiana, I wanted to say I love your idea of Zen being the crypto for the ladies. I think that's great. And I was thinking about that after you said it. And it's cool that actually our team is growing with more, more uh, females and not just a, a bunch of dudes in the tech industry working. So we're, we're, getting, we're building just a really nice organization. And uh, to that note, we really have an amazing team. And the website looks really cool. The placeholder website we, we unleashed, unrolled today, but the team, is, the team page still isn't updated. And we're actually uh, in works on like a, a big comprehensive reorg for the, the team and just putting people in appropriate roles with, you know, to make things more efficient and more visible to the community. Uh, but part of that is uh, there's a whole bunch of team members not currently on the team page. Uh, we know that, and we're going to be updating it uh, shortly. So um, just stay tuned. Now, that's that's what I had here uh, from, from our side. Why don't we hit Q&A quickly? I don't want it to be too long because we are trying to trim down on the time that we're doing these things. And so um, if you guys want to feel, you know, post any questions into the bi-weekly update chat, that would be great. And we can field those right now. Uh, otherwise we can always, you know, we're always available on all of our comm channels. I've personally been on Reddit or forum and telegram uh, much more recently. And basically our team is kind of split. Everyone has their own favorite comm channels that they're covering. So we're, we're definitely available. So I see some people typing in some questions. Uh, Rob, I had a question for you. Did you say you're uh, possibly going to be doing a podcast uh, later today or soon? I forget when exactly that was. Yeah, so that's, there's, uh, okay, there's, there's one podcast on the Tatiana show uh, that, that uh, Charles and I were going to be doing together. And I think we're going to push that to tomorrow. That was going to be at two o'clock, but 
Uh, fortunately, it was it was pushed out, or else I'd be late right now. <clears throat> and uh, I'm actually going to be meeting with Charles and doing uh, another series of interviews and just video content about our relationship and and R and D pipeline um, over the next couple weeks. So there'll be more more forthcoming soon. Okay, cool, Jarrell, You posted a question. Excited about the update. Uh, what do you think are the major issues with the UX and crypto right now? What approach are you taking to fix these? Okay, so from my perspective, crypto is geared for geeks, and you should not have to know what a private key is. Uh, you should not have to know what cryptography is to use these systems. And all of our wallets are kind of still stuck in this maybe second generation technology. Um, you know, where Bitcoin Core was was the first um, cryptocurrency type wallet, and now we're you know working on basically the second gen stuff. We need huge revamp. So what we're doing now is we're we're working with people who specialize in product and user experience. So we're doing a comprehensive um, look and bringing on some front end developers to rework some of our basic products. But in general, what I really want to do is a, a systematic approach to UX UI going forward. Um, so you, you'll see more of that. I, I don't know if that answers the question exactly, but I mean, fundamentally, we we have we have to seriously improve industry wide, uh, but in particular for this project, we need to start taking this mainstream. Okay, uh, next question. There was oh, a question yeah. on uh, exchanges in Asia, and are we going to be getting added to exchanges in Asia? And the answer is yes. We've definitely been working on that. We've been talking that about that in the live streams and the updates. Uh, exchange listings take a little while to do right and to get launched right. And there's different agreements, especially the bigger the exchanges go, the longer it takes. And um, we'll have announcements uh, in the future on that as we get closer. Cool. Another question on uh, licensing for new graphics. Uh, so I can say we're, we're fundamentally committed to open source. Uh, I don't I don't know which open source license we're using for the current graphics, uh, but we can definitely get back to you guys on that. Um, as with most logos, uh, I, th I think that you'd be able to use the logos uh, and graphics uh, in lots of different places, but especially with logos, uh, don't change them too much. Uh, in most cases, uh, it's better to not change the them at all and uh, use them exactly like they're posted. Cool. So are there any issue or any more details on staking rewards we're working on? So we're, we're um, I, I guess there's two ways in general that you'll be able to earn Zen by staking. So one is we have the 42 Zen stake requirement for the secure note system. Uh, if that's the question, we're working on you know, getting our, our payments current. Uh, the second way, which is in development right now, um, or in prototyping right now with IOHK, is staking to vote uh, and we'll be releasing more details over the coming probably i would say in the coming months really on the detail specifications that we're going to be putting into the prototype but in general you'll be able to stake your zen um, that it goes towards waiting for your vote on proposals um, let's see the privacy coin market has grown a ton so Sorry, the screen just. No, it's uh, how do we compare ourselves with <laughs> yeah. Monero and Zcash? Um, you know, we get a lot of our technology uh, about zk snarks from Zcash, and that's uh, excellent technology. I think it's great that we have the ability to have um, uh, regular uh, transactions that people can see on the blockchain: who sent it, who received it, the quantity and uh, the date. Well, not who, but the the addresses, as well as the fully shielded uh, transactions and. Um, we get that from Zcash, and we've been very open about that ever since we, we launched. The I think we're uh, working a bit more on the individual user usability. That's why we have such a large focus on wallets. Uh, we want to make sure that people can use all the capabilities of the ZK Snarks, which include the uh, private transactions, the shielded transactions, the messaging that's inherent in that, and as well as integrating with anonymous publishing. So that's all in the works. It's all on the roadmap. Uh, Monero is very different. Uh, Monero, all the transactions are private, and uh, it's not based on uh, the Bitcoin uh, code like 
um, Zencash is. So I think with Monero, they have sometimes it takes them a little bit longer to integrate with different uh, uh, providers and partners and things like that. So I, I think um, the Zencash is focused very much on individual user applications, and we really want people to use the cryptocurrency. That's why we have all the different people getting out all over the world, secure nodes all over the place, um, and having a number of different wallet and client applications that people can use in parallel um, because we want this to be used. Yeah, and I would say we, we do a great job with the uh, so we realize there's multiple stakeholders in the ecosystem, and we're working on ways to compensate everyone by uh, making this a, an open, inclusive system. So there's multiple ways to earn Zen. Um, but yeah, that's uh, you know I, I think um, we we start off with basically the the Snark technology from Zcash, but we're pumping you know we're moving in such a I think broad direction from there. So I think Ralph's point about usability is just absolutely huge. Uh, now, Alex, you posted a question on marketing bucket. Um, I, I guess, is that like how much are we spending on marketing? Because uh, that's actually part of this whole project radical transparency is we, we're working on a system where we have real-time visibility into our spending buckets. Uh, we, we don't have that available right now. I mean, I, I can our books and just add up things that we've spent, but I, I don't have an answer for you right now. It's not, also, it's not uh, just what is, how much is being spent. But if you look at the amount of funds that we have coming in uh, for the treasury, uh, as the price goes up, which it's, it's nice that our price has gone up, uh, that in um, fiat terms goes up. So we have a fairly significant amount of funds that we can spend every month. And one of the most difficult things is to make sure that we're actually spending those funds in ways that benefit the project. And, uh, and that's why you're going to see a lag between our price and what we spend on a monthly basis. But you got, just like Rob said, with the project Radical Transparency, people will be able to see what we're spending uh, for um, all the different roles and activities. Um, and some of the bigger spends that we have planned uh, are some of the research and development, uh, the software development, uh, and then working with uh, exchanges and other things like that. Uh, Rob, do you have to, anything to add on to that? No, I, I think your favorite question is coming up. Do we plan to increase the secure nodes? Well, um, I think the balance that we have right now uh, of the percentage versus the reward is is pretty good. The thing is, if we increase the percentage of spend that's for secure nodes, uh, we'll just get more secure nodes, and then we'll get the same question in, in a month or two. I see that over time, there's going to probably end up being a balance, um, and just like the most efficient miners end up uh, operating and uh, being the most profitable, the most efficient secure node operators that are able to operate their secure nodes and meet the challenge requirements are going to be the ones that continue to operate them long term. So I think um, if we just if we pay secure nodes more for the same exact work that's being done now, we'll get more secure nodes, and everybody will end up having uh, the same amount of payment. So this will certainly be something that will be uh, something that can be part of the uh, community votes, the the treasury, the governance. If um, as we go forward and we have uh, the governance uh, plan implemented and people feel strongly about it. That's something that can be put to a vote. So we'll see how that goes in the future. We want to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to get Zen Cash to the point where it can be um, it can be operated and run by the community. So for right now, we're going to do everything that we said that we're going to do in the white paper as modified by you know, things that have gone over at the time, but big picture, you know, the amount of funds that's going to the treasury, um, the amount of funds that are going to secure nodes and different things like that, we're going to keep that the same with the caveat that the community is going to have the opportunity to change that through governance in the future. No, that's awesome. Um, so unless I see any other questions, guys, I think this is a wrap and everyone can go back to Zending On and we'll chime in again in two more weeks. 
All right, sounds good. Uh, see y'all in a couple weeks.